Hey guys, it's Kai here, and in this podcast, I would like to introduce you to Ian Warner. Ian is a 2012 Olympic athlete. He is based in Toronto, Canada. And one thing that's really fascinating about um, Ian is that not only he is in physical shape, and he was able to achieve the the unachievable, which is in to be in the Olympics, but also he's um, he's really he spends a lot of time working on his mind. What what he did in 2017 was that he read over 100 books, so that's really amazing. He also he's really into um, building habits and, and and building structures about improving himself and also his family and also the community around him. So he's got a really amazing book called The Habit Stacker, and it's all about teaching you how to create particular habits and then execute these and also change your life as well. Ian, he woke up about four o'clock in the morning to do this. So, you know, I'm really thankful that he would to wake up so early to, to do this podcast, but I would like to introduce you to Mr. Ian Warner. Thanks. Okay. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, no, I, I, I get up. It, it actually, I, I promise it, it actually ended up working out uh, for the better because, um, I was scared that it would end up being like in the evening and usually I'm with my family in the evening. So yeah, when you said the time, early, I, I get up early, I'm good. I'm alert. I'm oh man. Up, man. No, <laughs> Thank no you so early. much, man. I really appreciate that. It's not easy getting at all for me anyway. It's so hard for me to get up so early at, in that particular no, hour. But not, no. yeah. So do you normally wake up around this time or? Like- yeah. So I, I, I get up, I usually get up at three ten, Um, and the reason, wow. well, it started, it's already recording. It, it by the started way. back. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no, no, not, not a problem. No, yeah. um, I, I, I started it because I had read the Miracle Morning by Hal. Oh El, yeah, that's, that's kind of started. Yeah. I started getting up like what he said, just get up like an hour earlier. Then it was so good. I tried getting up too, and I was like, man, that's awesome. Yeah. So I just got up three hours earlier. Yeah. And um, honestly, my life just got better and better in doing that. But it's even better now that I have kids because mm. now. I can get a lot of work done before they even get up. I don't have to yep. even worry about them. Mm-hmm. Then when they get up, my life just gets crazier and it's harder to control mm-hmm. just what's going to happen because they just have their own needs and, yeah. and life to just kind of get crazy with them. So, um, yep. yeah, I just, I just kept it going and it's, it's been, it's been great, man. Oh, wow. That's incredible. So how long have you been doing the, um, the morning, um, the miracle morning for a few years or it's like since the beginning of time? Yeah, I started it in 2015 so 2015. it's been okay it's been, yeah so it's been four years now it's been a good a good track doing it so oh nice good stuff awesome so um yes, sir ian i really appreciate your time today um you know that you booked out it's really early in the morning over there just like to let the the audience know that it's four o'clock over there so and uh, you look really fresh as well i remember when i did my first podcast and it was four o'clock in the morning as well but I was not as um, as alert yeah. as you, but yeah, you're looking good. So, um, um, and, and yeah. I just want to make sure I got it right. Your your yeah. name, you pronounce it Koa, right? It's Kwa. Yeah, it's Kwa. Kwa, it's Kwa. Okay, yeah. got it, got it. Okay, thanks cool. for that. Yeah, no, no yeah. problem. I just want to make sure I got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, um, yeah, they they always always like, is it Koa or something? But yeah, it's just Kwa. So, yeah, Kwa, cool, cool. All right, no worries. Um, okay, so. What really, um, really got my attention is, oh yeah, by, th- by the way, like, thanks for reaching out and um, also writing the article for, for the website as well. Uh, read through it's fantastic, the article that you submitted. Um, cool. And yeah, so when, no when I read the article, I thought, okay, I've got to get this guy on the podcast. Like, you know, um, you're doing amazing things. Um, you know, you, you're in the Olympics in 2012. And uh, I know that a lot of people that's listening to this, they're, they're thinking, okay, how did, you, how did you do it? Like, what was that decision that, made you get into the Olympics and how did you get into it? What was, what was that key turning point? I'm curious about that one. Uh, I think a, a, a big thing was just knowing and setting that, that vision for what you want for your life. Mm. Um, because when you can set that vision and you know what you want to uh, accomplish, um, it helps you to get through the rough patches because the rough patches come. It's not just like this smooth sailing road where it's like everything just goes your way. Mm. Um, but, the reason I ended up getting into habits and why I love habits is because that's what it really came down to is as you get to a higher and higher level in sports, what you end up realizing is that you get around obviously more and more talented people. Like if you're talking about NBA basketball, yeah. everyone in the NBA is extremely talented. Like even someone who you see riding the bench, they're very good at basketball. 
Mm. Um, so what ends up making the difference a lot of times is like the little things. Um, mm. It's not just showing up to practice at that point. It's the sleep. It's the hydration. It's eating properly. Mm. And when I was in high school and in college, I really worked on like getting those little things right. Um, and it and it really took you know not conforming to what everybody else is doing. In, in college, everybody wants to party, everybody wants to drink, and yeah. that's a lifestyle they want to live. But I had to be disciplined and do everything I could to try and get to bed and get, get eight to nine hours of sleep and yep. to, to, to eat good and get my nutrition right. And what ends up happening is below, I think of it like the bamboo tree, below the ground, it's like the roots are growing and they're getting bigger and stronger to be able to support this big tree. But above the, above the surface, you don't see anything happening yet. Exactly. And that's what happened. Mm. It was like, my first couple of years of college, I was actually hurt a couple of years. And then um, I had one season where I stayed healthy the whole year, but I didn't really perform super well. Okay. And at the end of that season, my coach was like, Ian, if you can stay healthy like that again, one more year, like it, it's going to be insane. And I, and I didn't really take it as anything. I was just like, oh yeah, whatever. Like he's okay. just being nice. <laughs> and he was a hundred percent right. The next year I came back and wow. everything just went my way. I just started killing kids. Mm. And, um, uh, it was because of like the years and years of work happening below ground that no one else was seeing. And then all of a sudden that bamboo tree started to grow mm. and it just shot up really quickly. Mm. How old were you at the time when, um, when you, you know, took on these habits? Uh, I would say, I would say kind of came in round. So the f first time I was really introduced to habits was when I was uh, in middle school. And this is where my parents are really smart. I mean, and they talk about this in the power of habit by Charles wow. Dickens. Well. Okay. Um, the I had a, a a major injury. I had a spiral fracture of my tibia playing mm -hmm. football. Yep. And they used that like that catastrophe in my life. And the book talks about this using really bad or harsh moments in your life to create yeah, huge changes. Yeah. A lot of times people won't change otherwise. So if you mm -hmm. have a company and you want to get them to improve their safety standards they're not going to do it unless some tragic thing happens, like someone dies or yeah. someone gets really hurt. And then they're like, Oh my gosh. And everybody in the company is like shocked by it. And then that's when you can make a big change. Yeah. So I got hurt. And that's when they started introducing me to vitamins. And they're like, Hey, Ian, you know, if you don't want to get hurt again, you should start taking your vitamins. You should start mm. sleeping, taking mm. nutrition. And slowly they started introducing things. And I didn't really get it at, at that point. I'm like, why are you guys making me do all this stuff? It just seems kind of unnecessary. But I listened to them and just did it anyway because they're my parents and I was pretty young. Yep. But then when I got to yeah. high school, I really started to see how those habits, I was really different than a lot of other kids. And mm -hmm. they didn't know what they wanted from life. They were just going to school every day just because I was like, no, like I'm, I'm from Toronto, but I'm like, I wanted to live in the United States. So I'm like, the best way to get there is to get a track scholarship. And um, that's, that's what I was like locked in and into doing. And I, I ended up doing that. But then when I got to college, it was like yeah. a whole nother time because now my parents weren't there anymore. So, yeah that parental guidance to help keep me on track. It's like, I had to do it all on my own. Mm -hmm. And the first year there, it was really hard to do that. But I realized, again, what the vision I had, so I wanted to go to the Olympics and I knew I wasn't gonna get there unless I was able to um, continue adopting those, those habits and staying on that, that correct path. Mm -hmm. So your parents were very supportive. Like they, they gave you the, the guidance that you need, that they, they gave you the, um, the, the book on, on habits. And that's what really taught you on how to, you know, uh, improve yourself and then constantly train. And then eventually, yeah, you had the idea of, of getting into the Olympics, wasn't it? It was just, um, yeah, yeah. You, really... you know, um, one, one thing I, I strongly do not believe in is I'm not a fan of the idea of a self-made person. Mm. Um, I think someone, even if it's not someone's parents, someone has helped someone along the way, like yes. someone has given you help. And you should be seeking help. You should be seeking mentors. You should be seeking someone out there who, who believes in you. Mm -hmm. um, I was blessed in the sense that, yes, I, my, my parents, their athletic dreams, their parents didn't believe in sports at all. Mm -hmm. So they, their parents killed their athletic dreams and they mm -hmm. didn't want to do that to their, ch their children. So yeah. um, they were supportive and they were willing to read and learn themselves to be able to um, pass better information down to me. Mm -hmm. um, so that was definitely a huge um, thing that uh was was very helpful for me growing up mm, okay and um okay so how did you so you're training you're you're really you're working really hard on, on your body um your, your, your physical and mental as well 
Um, how about how did you get into the Olympics? Like, what was the process like? What, what did you do? So to to make an Olympic team, what you have to do is um, each for each sport, um, there's a governing body. Mm-hmm. Um, so for track and field, which is the sport I did, uh, the the governing body is called Athletics Canada, and they kind of set the standards of what you have to do. Okay. Um, and along with the Olympics, they have their own standards. So uh, specifically, what I had to do was after my NCAA season um, here in the United States, I flew back to Canada for the Olympic trials, which is basically a track meet. And every country has one. Like there's an Olympic trials in Australia and yeah. every and every place out there. Um, and you have to come top two or top three or top four, depending on what event you're trying to make it for. Mm-hmm. I ended up making it as a part of the four by 100 meter relay. So oh, I came wow. second at Canadian nationals and actually my brother actually won. So he was first, I was second. So I went to the Olympics with mm-hmm. my, my older brother. Um, <laughs> That's so cool. Which was, yeah, which was yeah, a, a very cool experience. But um, yeah. it, what was cool about it though, is it really came down to like, you could have a really good season, but not perform on that day and you won't make the team. And, wow. um, I had had that happen in previous years where um, to make like a world championship team or whatever, I didn't perform on a day like I should have. Mm. So it was really nice that on the day that I needed to perform, I, I really showed up and, and showed out on that day and was, was able to, to be named to the team, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations, man. Um, okay. Yep. And then from the Olympics um, and then you moved, uh, you've also got a, a, a really fascinating book as well called Habit Stacker as well um what really got my attention is um, when you submitted the email i saw the domain of habit stacking and i mainly did a search and i saw what you're doing it's this, this more focus on personal development so um so could you explain what that book is is all about the habit stacker yeah so it's it's, it's so habit stacker in general is the, is the whole brand and yeah. uh, I, I i'll start with the genesis of it so it started yep. with uh an app and i actually <laughs> started off creating an alarm clock app actually cool and <laughs> okay. what i wanted to do was create an app that was a social alarm clock basically where okay i could if i didn't if i hit snooze it would basically send a notification to all my friends letting them mm-hmm. know that i had snooze that morning mm-hmm. um, but what the, the trial i ran into with it was basically like if you have an iphone uh the the apple alarm clock is is good because it can it's the only app on your phone that can override all of your um your settings so if you have mm. your phone on do not disturb your alarm will still go off if yeah. you have your phone on vibrate it doesn't matter what it is your phone will, your, your 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 alarm will still make noise yeah but think about if you put your phone on do not disturb and facebook could just override that they don't allow other apps to do that so i was like okay that's a problem so i was like man what other impact can i make i'm, I'm a big fan of helping people wake up early but I'm also, I was like, what else can I do very, very, very good that I can also teach other people? I'll make a huge impact in their life. And I was like, you know what? Habits. Habits are a big thing that has helped me get to where I am in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started there. I switched and started making a habit tracker. So people could set what habits they want to do and know whether they've done them every single day. So for example, I could show you in the last six months or whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, longer yeah. than that, but I can show you last <laughs> year. Oh, how many times I got up at three o'clock in the, in the morning and how many That's times so I did. Cool. I, yep. I track it every day. And I know. Mm. Um, and I'm a big believer that, you know, what gets tracked can be measured and what gets measured can be improved. So mm. um, I started there, but then when I started looking at a lot of the other habit trackers, I realized that all they were, were apps. They were just apps in the app store. They had no brands online. Mm. And I was like, you know, um, just from my marketing skills, I, that's what I studied in school. I, I know how to do SEO pretty well. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me start writing content and then I can start building up my SEO. Mm. And then as a result of building up my SEO, um, I just started building another pathway for people to learn about my brand. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, Man, I don't want to stop there. Like, why don't I start writing books? And yeah. then um, uh, I created an online course called Habit Mastery. So cool. I'm providing wow. everything people could possibly need to um to learn about habits. If you want to listen, I, I do a daily podcast. If you want to watch video, well, I got my video course. If mm. you want to app something that's on your phone to, to you can check in with every day, I got my app for that. Whatever it is you like to read, I got you there. I got free books. I got books on the Amazon, nice. whatever you want. I want to, I want to be and be able to provide any resources that people need on the internet to mm. be able to improve their habits. 
Yeah, yeah. I was listening to um, a few of your podcasts uh, the other day. It's really great. Like you're sharing some amazing content. It's really great value. Um, I love how you know you speak on on your podcast about you're sharing the mindset, your habits, and the thing that things that you're learning as well. Um, the way you explain it is so clear as well. And um, yeah, it's really great. Like these little snippets of of your ideas. It's just easy to to digest and implement yeah. into your life. So yeah, and, and, you know, and you know what's really cool about it is like. I, I actually start, so that was the one thing I actually did for more selfish reasons. Like anybody who's in business knows the way I was successful in business is by providing for other people and giving value to others, obviously. Yep. But I actually started the podcast because I wanted to prove to myself that I could show up and make content every single day. Love that. And because <laughs> and it, it, it was hard, like it's not easy. Like, and, and like what I always tell people and why I love habits is because when you develop a habit, you're able to do something even when you don't feel like it. Mm, like, there were mm. so many track practices. I didn't want to. I didn't want to run. Like, yes, I loved track in general, but that doesn't mean you want to do it every day. It doesn't mean you always want to be doing hard workouts. It doesn't mean you always want to put four hundred pounds on your back and squat it. Like, you don't mm. always want to do that stuff. Mm. Um, it was the same thing with creating content. Like, some days I don't want to do my podcast. Like, I actually did my daily podcast right before I got on this one. Yep. Just to get out of the way, it's one of the first things I do because I don't always want to do it. Yep. And if I let it go later on in the day, I'm, I'm just probably not going to do it. And mm. um, that uh, is a test, a testament to showing people by showing up for something every single day, you're just guaranteed to get better. You're, and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have mess ups, but it's okay. Cause you're going to show up. You have, you have the next day and the day after that to mm. continue working on it, to continue getting better, to continue putting something out there and um, just trying to get to your best work. And it just takes time in order to do that. Mm, that's amazing i like what you said about proving to yourself um that you can do it so is that the little technique that you you do to try and push yourself through is just to try and prove you that you can do it like okay i'm going to wake up at 3 8, three ten. i'm going to you know get this podcast done that's a little technique that you apply to to, to yeah. push through yeah so i think a big thing across the board is you are always either building confidence or you're losing confidence every day mm, all through i love that so the more you do what you say you're going to do, the more confidence you build. So if I would have not shown up for this interview, even if I tell myself it's not a big deal, if mm -hmm. I said I was going to do it and I didn't show up, like I know deep down in myself, like that was wrong mm -hmm. and I'm losing a little confidence. But when you say, hey, I'm going to do a daily podcast and you look back after a week, and you're like, I did it every single day. I did day. it, yeah. <laughs> you, that builds confidence and you, you get a little more confident in yourself and that just carries on in everything you do. It's like, if, you say, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to eat cookies. I'm not going to eat sweets. And it's like, ah, uh, you see a cookie and you eat it. You lose a, there's a little part of you that just is like, yeah. ah, <laughs> a little bit of confidence in yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, so I just think of that throughout the day. If you continue to do things on the track of what you really want to do, you just keep building that confidence meter up and up and up and up. But mm -hmm. then it can also go the other way where you're just continuing to not do the things that you want to do. And that confidence meter is just going down, 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 down. down. Yeah. And yeah. You, you just, you're not able to do anything. Um, you just kind of paralyzed because you can't even see yourself doing simple things to be able to start going on the right path. Yeah, man, you're, you're really talented. I mean, you made it to the Olympics, you know, SEO, you've, you've been, you know, you're a writer as well. You may, you, you know how to write, um, you got your own podcast. This is all about goals. Like how do you, I'm curious about how do you set these goals? Do you have a vision board or is there a certain system that you, the personal system that you apply? What's your, What's your system cool. there? Yeah, so goals are a tough one. I've, I've gone back and forth on this, but what I, I believe and I teach now is three things. Is mm. you got to have a mission, you got to have goals, you got to have habits. So the mission is where you have to start with the mission. The mission is what do I want to accomplish on my deathbed? When you think about wow. books like um, um, Seven Highly Effective Habits. Uh, Stephen uh, Covey, yep. habits. Mm. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Stephen Covey, yes. Yep. Um, so in that book, um, there's a chapter on beginning with the end in mind. Yeah. And you have, to, you have to know what you want and what you want in the end. So it's no different than how when I started track, I knew I wanted to, I was striving to go to the Olympics. Now, there was a possibility that that wouldn't have happened, of course, but that kept me on the right path to eventually getting a scholarship and, and being able to do a lot of other cool things on the way to going to the Olympics, you know? Yeah. Um, so you start with that mission. What do you want to accomplish on the deathbed? And then once you have that, the problem is it's very daunting. It's like, holy crap, I want to do this huge thing with my mm. life. I want to win a Nobel Peace Prize or I want to do this or that. It's like, it's so big that you have to break it down. 
Now it's like, yeah. but now that you know what you want to accomplish when you're 80, it's like, well, what do you want to do when you're 70? What do you want to do when you're 50? What do you want to do when you're 40? What do you want to do when you're 30? Well, what do you want to do in the next five years, the next mm. three years, the next two years, the next year, and the next six months? Yep. So then you've now broken it down like that. Mm-hmm. So you have goals that you want to hit. And then the third thing, and this is the key where most people, get, I think, get it wrong. Because most people won't have a mission. They'll have goals, but they won't have habits. And the habits are, okay, now that you know what goals you want to hit, what are you going to do every single day to make sure you get there? Mm-hmm. And the reason that is key is because that's where you put the most control in, in your hands. Mm-hmm. Goals, anyone can say, okay, I want to make a million dollars. Okay, cool. But what are you going to do every day to make sure that you get there? Like you yeah. look at someone like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant wanted to be one of the greatest basketball players ever. Mm. This guy took 400 jump shots a day from when he was like, Yeah, I know. <laughs> that is crazy. Like, how many people in high school have the discipline to get up and take 400 shots day in, day out? And here's where it gets powerful with habits. Multiply 400 shots by, if he trained, you know, 340 days a year mm. by a 25-year career. That like is just, it, yeah, you can't comprehend that. Just you yeah, can't you're, comprehend it. Yeah, you're a master. It's so yeah, many, exactly. It's so many shots, but that mm. is how everything works. I don't think I'm a talented writer at all. But what I've done is I've continued practicing and working mm. at it, and writing blog posts, and writing blog posts, and writing guest posts, and just continuing to write. So I just write every day. And mm. as I've done that over a long period of time, it's like, oh wow, guess what? My writing has gotten better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It's it's and, really good. Yeah, I was reading your writing. It's um, you know, very personable. It's very clear. And I was thinking, wow, this 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 guy's amazing. So, I, I, and it is true what you just said about um, you don't see you don't see the work that's being done like on the background. It's mm-hmm. just like you like just like you said, like you've been writing lots of content. You've been um, practicing. You've been training your body. You, you know, these podcasts and everything. You not know, not a lot of people see this, but you're putting in a lot of effort and. You know, I, I can't imagine where you're going to be in the next 10 years with all this stuff that you've already been building. You know, and, and see, this, this is how I know you have the mindset because you said like the next 10 years, right? Yeah. And a lot of people, they're too short-term for focus. And I'll tell you what's very difficult about building habits mm. um, versus um, bad habits. This is, the, this is the tricky part about it is that bad habits pay off almost immediately. Mm. But good habits take a very long time to pay off so like books for example you don't read a book and then your life completely changed the next day so true it's like, yeah like it almost does nothing immediately like it, mm. it's after a while of reading more and more and more books and then all of a sudden a couple of years you look back and you're like wow i learned a lot of different things and you, you you don't realize it in the moment but you look back over a long period of time it's like well i'm completely different working out same thing mm. anybody can go to the gym one day nothing changes in your body you go to the gym for a month, eh, you feel better, but your body still doesn't really change. But you go to the gym every day for a year, and okay, now your body's changing. You do it for mm. 10 years, and you're a completely different human. Yeah. And you want to do everything you can to not get caught up in the short term. Um, sugar is great in the short term, but in the long term, it's killing you. Um, mm. Skipping workouts in the short term is, is, it might be good, but in the long run, it, it's killing you, but all the things that you want, it's because you have to focus on what do you want for yourself, at least in the next 10 years for your life. Mm-hmm. Love that. How about, um, but do you have any reward systems and, and um, any techniques where you overcome challenges? Because as you're going after these goals, you're going to come across roadblocks, right? So um, like, do you have any reward systems and then, you know, overcoming these challenges, any types of techniques like that? Yeah, so I always do like small little challenges in my day. Um, mm. So small things like this, um, I will. So let's say I want to, I feel the urge to check Facebook, for example, or to go on okay. social media. Sure. What I will do is say, well, okay, if that's what you want to do, let's work for the next 40 minutes, get some stuff done. And then your reward for that is you can go on and check Facebook. So I make that, that distraction, I make it the reward for having a good little mini work session through the day. Mm. Um, so I challenge myself day to day with little things like that. But overall, um, I would say no. And, I, I, and, I, and everybody's a little bit different on this. But for me, I am very internally driven. Like I'm not, I don't do what I'm doing because I'm like, oh man, I want to, to show the world this or I want to do this for this person. Or, or like, that's not my number one thing. My number one thing is I want to do this for myself. Mm. Um, 
that is enough drive to to get me up like um like eric thomas always says you know my passion wakes me up right it's like mm. I, it, it's internal for me and i think that's the best place for it to start like it has to be something you're doing for you um, track was something i did for me i didn't do mm. it because my parents wanted me to my parents told me multiple times if you don't want to do this we'll support you in whatever you want to do oh so, that's great yeah be, be done with it and uh, that helped me a lot but um that's advice I would definitely give to someone. Like if you're if you're doing it because your mom or you want to prove it to your ex girlfriend or or whatever, and that's your number one thing. Like mm-hmm. everyone can have a chip on the shoulder and want to prove someone wrong. I get that, but it shouldn't be your number one. You should be doing it because it's something that matters to you. And when it matters to you, when those low moments come and you don't want to get up and you don't feel motivated, um, you're able to to keep fighting through. And again, that's where habits really kick in. And I was just talking about this. Um, mm-hmm. The one thing for me about releasing a book is it's so much work for a while but then when I release it it's kind of like I hit my goal and it almost can be depressing in, in, in a sense like yeah. for a day I could just be in a little weird funk where I'm like I've accomplished something but I don't um and I just don't feel motivated mm. and, but that's where habits kick in habits keep you close and they say look this is something that you've been doing this is who you are writing is not something I do for someone else it's just who I am that's just mm. part of me podcast now is just a part of me um, working out every day is just a part of me eating good is like all these things are just a part of who i am mm-hmm. so i'm not motivated it's like that's just my behavior that's what i do yep and it's okay. easier to stick to those things yep yep i can i can see that um you know you work really hard on improving yourself i love that um you're very careful about what you do um in terms of your habits like from a long-term perspective you know if i'm going to be having this beer now um, if I keep doing this, it's going to wreck my body over the long term. But you know, once is okay. But yeah, I got to watch out to to do this on a consistent basis, right? So um, you're constantly improving yourself. But I'm trying to think about what about the circle of friends that um, you hang around with. You know, I'm pretty sure that you you have a circle of friends that you know are into self improvement. But there's probably another circle of friends that in, isn't into those type of things. How do you navigate around those type of people? Because I know that there's a lot of people out there who want to improve themselves. You know you take on these new habits they're learning all these amazing things but their current circle of friends don't support that what what's your advice on on, on that from there it's, oh man, that, that's a great question and i actually yeah. just uh that's what my podcast was about this morning because oh, okay cool there's nothing worse than when you're trying to make a change yeah and the people around you are trying to hold back that change because they're they're fearful and you really only have two choices in that in that situation if your circle of friends don't support what you're trying to do you have to either change their mind, get them to see why it's a good thing and get them to start building with you. Um, so for example, if you're wanting to work out and you have a friend that's out of shape and wine and, and they're, they're not working out, you can, can try and convince them that, Hey, this is why working out is going to be good and get them to be your workout partner and get them on your, or you have to find a way to adopt a new environment. And one thing I can say about growing up that I was very blessed with, my entire environment was track like I, I all my friends wanted to be fast they all wanted to get scholarships That's my cool. older brother ended up running track and he got a scholarship and went to the olympics with me mm. i was around that world so i understood the power of it but what was tough was when i shifted into entrepreneurship that circle didn't support that anymore it was like uh. and it's like oh now i need to learn about money and managing people and this I, it was like a completely different world like mm the way i have gone about that is i still do have those friends and the way i navigate that is the ones that i that do want to be entrepreneurs i spend way more time talking to those people mm. the ones that don't like we just have distance it's not that i i dislike them i'll do whatever i can to help them if they need me or whatever but i just don't talk to them as much mm. because i'm trying to do different things now i'm not an athlete anymore and i need more people like you like and i lean on people like you and i ask you questions and try yeah. and build relationships people who are doing very similar things to me mm. and um it's a hard thing though because friendship is one of those things you have someone who might have been loyal to you for years of your life yeah you know, yeah it's tough yeah it's almost like betraying them and i think the best way to look at it is if they can't see where you're trying to go with your life and they just completely outright don't support it um get some proof go prove to them that what you're doing is worth supporting and mm. if they're a good friend they might not see it right away which is understandable but they'll see it in time and um, change their mind and, and, and want to support you. 
Um, but the best way to make those changes is to be around people who already are doing those things. So if you want to start hanging around a whole bunch of people who already read, you'll just become that because when they find out you don't read, it's like you're, you're, not, you're not conforming to that tribe. Mm. And a lot of times you see conformity as a bad thing, but conformity is only bad if you're conforming to things you don't want to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're, you're, if you, are, 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 you want to start working out and you start hanging around a whole bunch of guys in the gym who are strict about their diets and all they do is work out, and you conform to that, well, that's a good thing. You're conforming to something that is helping you to, to get to where you want to be. Mm, okay. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, now let's have a look at, I, I was listening to um, another podcast and you mentioned that last year you, I think you achieved the goal of reading over a hundred books last year. That's, that's absolutely amazing. You were, um, I don't know anyone who's actually accomplished that. I think, uh, I think Bill Gates talks about reading that many books as well, but that's a lot of books. How did you, how did you accomplish that goal? Was it? So it was actually in 2017 that I did this. And yeah. I was, in, I was just in a really unique position where I was working from home. And honestly, the, this job that I had, I was actually, I actually found a way to outsource the whole thing. So I hired a, <laughs> a VA and they were just doing it all for me. Mm. So I had the most amount of time I've ever had in my life. Well, what were you and, building at home? What were you working on? Oh, so at that point I was, I was actually working for it. I was actually working for a company. So I was, oh, okay. I was just doing digital marketing. So mm. I was doing SEO, that type of stuff. And I had just done enough of it that I, I could teach someone else how to do it all. Mm. And um, yeah, so I did that. Cool. And, um, but that freed me up so I could just read. Like I didn't have a, a, any crazy amount of responsibilities at the time. And, I, it started out just, oh, okay, you know what, it actually was Ty Lopez that actually, even start, I was the first person that even put that idea in my head, mm. and um, I think a big thing I should stay here that helped me to do this is I didn't read every single book from start to finish, and mm. the reason why I say that is, like, there were some where I had clearly got the main point of the book, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, hey, I've read, like, 70% of this, I get what's happening here, and I was like, okay, mm. hey, on the next one. Um, so I just, I always tell people that just so that they know, because a lot of people are like, no, it's not, it doesn't count unless you've read it from start to finish. Um, I kind of let go of that idea that you have mm. to read a book. I think you just have to get the main point from the book. Yeah, and true. Kind of like, and, and get more, because when you're reading a book, especially if a book's like 300, 400 pages, you can only take so much from it at one time. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just, I would honestly just spend eight hours a day reading, like, I, I had heard that that's what Warren Buffett does. And I really didn't believe it. I was like, there's no way someone can read for eight hours a day. Um, but when I was doing that, honestly, I just started flying through books. And then before you knew it, know it, I was at like 60 books, but it was like maybe like October. Mm. And I was like, holy crap, I could actually probably read a hundred. Like if I really push it, I could probably read a hundred books and I just, I just went for it by that point. Like I just truly tried to focus all my effort and energy into yeah. uh, finishing a uh, hundred books. And yeah, like I did it. And um, yeah, I wrote a, I wrote a blog post about it and on, on medium, uh, which it actually ended up doing very well. And um, yeah, it was just an amazing experience because what I realized from it was that at first I was like, Hey, is this really going to do anything? Like I'm just flooding myself with so much information, mm. but I realized later, like I'd read so many different types of books. Um, I, I pulled books from different people's books and stuff. And um, again, years later, like now it's paying off. Cause I just, I, I read so much and got such a breadth of knowledge. Mm. It made me so much interested in the conversation. I think that was actually the thing that helped me the most. When I would just be talking to people, I would just be like, oh yeah, I read this book. And in the book, it said, da, 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 da. And I could just, yeah, I could yeah, just yeah. and they would just be like, oh wow, like you read that. And because I had read so many in one year, it just, I, it just added to my Rolodex. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I would say I probably will not for a while get another chance to do that just because I've been more busy with family and business. Mm. But I look forward to being older one day and being able to do that again because it was so relaxing and refreshing to be able to read that much in one year. Wow. So it was like the whole year um, where it was like full time just reading and you're just absorbing all this information and wow, yeah. that, that would just change and, perspective. And I, yeah. And I will also say one thing that really helped this, and this is where like circumstances always play so much in, in, in timing and how these things happen. Mm. That point I was living in Ann Arbor, Michigan, okay. which uh, for people listening, that's where the University of Michigan is, which is one of the more popular 
universities here. Okay. And uh, I found a bookstore that was giving new books away for a dollar to three dollars. Like, <laughs> like paperbacks were literally a dollar. And basically people would donate books that were like brand new books. Yeah. And I could buy them for three bucks. And it that was crazy. Incredible. That's crazy. So yeah, I would yeah. go there with 50 bucks and just come back with a pile of books. <laughs> so that also is something that helped. And I will say this. If you are someone who wants to read that much, mm. the one way to push yourself to do that is buy some more books that you can possibly handle. Mm. If you just buy like one book at a time over like three or four months, then you're going to read at that rate. But mm. if you keep, if you look at your bookshelf and you're like, oh my gosh, there's like 40 books I've never read before. It pushes you to, to read them faster so that you can get to the next book and just keep buying more and keep getting them on the bookshelf. Um, mm. I know for some people, I will say this, that might be anxiety building for some people. Some people that would be like, oh my gosh, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. But if you're the type of person who you can handle pushing yourself like that, I strongly recommend that. Find a, used, find a used bookstore, buy used books from Amazon and just buy more than you can possibly handle. That That's moment. a great tip. And, yeah, and it will, it will force you to. It, you, you, you just, it, it forces you to get up every day when you see a pile of five books you haven't read. You're like, man, I gotta get to books so I can get to these next five. Yeah, that that is so true. There's um yeah, whenever I go to a bookstore, I always walk away with maybe one or two books, but I'm a bit slow when it comes to reading. But the times when if I go traveling and then I find that there's some sort of sale and I buy a whole bunch of books, if it's sitting on my table, I'm just like, okay, I gotta get through these books, right? So and it is true exactly what you said. Um like when you're reading a book, you wanna just get like a few uh, key points from it and if it's a really good book such as like think and grow rich like by napoleon hill that's something that you want to read over and over again and really digest it but most of the books out there you just go through or just get the key points and then get to the next book right so yes that is so and, cool. and i will also say with that that's a very good point and the only way to find those books that are worth reading over and over and over again is to read a lot of books like yeah, you don't yeah. know which book. so for example i'm not a big fan of thinking i shouldn't say i'm not a big fan Mm-hmm. Thinking Go Rich isn't my favorite Napoleon Hill book. Okay. My favorite is actually The Law of Success. I read The Law of Success. I read at least four to five pages of that every single day. And I've done that for the last two years. Wow. Um, at first, Thinking Go Rich is the one everyone talks about. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, reading, um, you know, the um, um, Valuetainment. Um, uh, Patrick very popular, David? Yes, yes, him. Yeah. His book list, he has The Law of Success as number one. So I was like, oh, what's this? I've never heard of it. Yeah. So I bought it. And I was like, the, the book is like 500 pages, I think. And it is, it is amazing. There's 15 core things that it's like, you have to hit these 15 things to be successful. Um, mm. Like you know, self-confidence, uh, um, the golden rule. And it goes through a, a whole bunch of things that uh, mm. you know, thinking, you know, accurate thinking. And um, so I just read a bit of that every day. And I think that for me, it's been much more beneficial than, think and grow rich but yeah. i only figured that out in the year that i read 100 books because yeah. i just read some books i figured out which books were worth actually reading over and over again and i and i would say you probably have to read between 150 and 300 books to really find those like 50 books that are like mm. these are game changers for me and i'm going to continue diving back into these books yeah yeah i guess it's a bit like the Pareto principle the 80 20 rule you know, so you had to go through the hundred books and then now that hundred, you found the 20 really good ones yes. that you can just yeah, really want to spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's exactly. so cool. Um, and I think um, one of the best best books that you read was uh, Relentless by Tim Grover. Is that correct? That's the one that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Relentless. Um, and I would, I would... So I would say that was the best book for... If you're, if you're talking in the athlete world. For okay. business, I'm not as much of a fan of that book because it, it's very cutthroat. Like, it's very much like... Is it? How... Okay. Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, how these guys develop their mindset. Mm. Whereas I think sports, the one thing that's very different to business, business requires collaboration. Like I, like me and you could be selling very similar products, but we can Mm. still work together and help each other. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sports doesn't really work. Like sports, it's like, I'm trying to win. I'm trying to make sure (laughs) it's a a very clear win and lose. Whereas business, it's more, there is, there can be a win and lose, but business it's, you're trying to find a lot of win-wins as well exactly and it's doable like you can easily you know, construct oh, these sure. creative deals and stuff like that so exactly yeah. and like even something simple like guest like me writing that guest post on your on your blog mm. it's beneficial for both of us in, in many different ways like yeah definitely. content if you, you reason for people to come to your site yeah. i share it out and people go and so it's it, win-win and then for yeah. me, 
exactly. And it, and it works to get my name out there. So mm. it's beneficial on, on both ends. And that, that win to win is not really found in Relentless, but it is a great book for reading for just developing a killer mindset to be successful. Mm. Okay, cool. And um, I think I also heard you talking about uh, natural healing, like you don't believe in taking pills. Is that correct? And you believe in just healing your body naturally? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so a, a big thing is with that is I think you should avoid taking pills at all costs. I think there was a time when um, me- me taking active medicine is helpful, but I also think the body is designed to naturally heal itself. Mm, um, interesting. Just in the same way that like, if you get a cut, the cut will heal itself. Like if, you give it rest and you, you know, you stay out of water and, and whatnot, like the, the cut will naturally close up and your skin will grow back. Yeah. Um, now, obviously if, if the cut is too deep, then you need to get stitches and there's this also se- se- a severity to that as well, just how mm. severe the cut is. But um, I think everything applies like, like that. It's like, if you're eating healthy, you're sleeping, you're, you're doing everything um, you can correctly to take care of your body. Um, the body can heal a lot of things on its own. Um, but the problem is, is that a lot of people aren't eating properly and because they're not eating properly and they're, they're more stressed than they should be with work or just different things in life. Um, that's making people sick and ill. And then you're dependent on taking pills and having surgeries, uh, to fix those things. And it's kind of a downward spiral. Mm, um, okay. I'm not completely anti never take any medication never um, have surgery um, like i've had surgeries for sports injuries that needed you know, you know to be repaired mm. but also realizing that when you have surgeries and you do these traumatic things to your body there also are long-term consequences to them mm. um you know, there's nfl players in the states who've had you know 20 30 surgeries in their life and by the time they're 50 they can barely walk you know yeah um so there's also consequences to having those things so it's just thinking again thinking long term about everything you're doing like by taking this pill um, I risk being addicted, um, and you also are covering up. Um, you're, you're, a lot of times, the problem with medication is you're fixing the symptoms and not the root cause. Mm. So, I keep getting headaches, and I just keep taking Advil. It's like, well, why do you keep getting headaches? Do you keep getting headaches because your diet is poor? You keep getting headaches because you have high blood pressure or mm. low blood pressure. Like, what's the, the 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 thing that's causing this? And let's fix the root so that it's gone for good instead of just masking it. Yeah. Okay. So that being said, what about, um, what's your current diet? Like what's, what's your routine in terms of diet? I think you mentioned before about sugar, you removing sugar from your diet. Is, um... yeah, so sure, sugar is the big one for me. Um, okay. I guess out of all diets, so there's, you know, there's so many diets these days and yeah. I think this is areas people can get the most confused. Um, uh, I don't think that there's any one right or wrong diet, but I think mm-hmm. the one thing that's very consistent across every diet is that people need to eat more greens and they need to minimize sugar. So that's okay. the main thing that I focus on minimizing the sugar intake and then maximizing how much vegetables that I can, that I can get on my plate, uh, whether you eat meat or not, or eat bread or carbs, like all that stuff is, is a um, kind of up for debate. Mm. Um, I can't eat carbs. And that doesn't work for me personally. Um, I actually find I do really well eating like things like rice and eating pastas and stuff. Um, but that's not everybody. So I think you got to find what works there. But if you look across almost every diet, there's no diet that's like, hey, man, eat as much sugar as you possibly can. Like, yeah. it's just, sugar is just the one thing that you know um, is, is, is just is going to rot you from the inside out. And vegetables are the one thing um, that, you know, if you're eating a lot of greens, um, are, are going to you know give you the vitamins you need and, and help sustain you over the long run. Mm, okay fantastic um yeah i'm, I'm gonna try that i'm gonna um when i finish I'm, I'm actually on the no coffee um challenge so <laughs> it's been about a week since i've had no coffee and i've yeah. gone through all the headaches and everything man and this is it's really intense like this is the most uh, intense withdrawals i've ever had but um yeah i think i'm gonna get through it okay <laughs> but yeah removing all caffeine from my diet and everything so it's uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be getting there pretty soon. I tried the cold yeah. challenge, shower challenge as well. So that was pretty good. But this one is the most challenging one. No coffee. You, you, you did the, the cold shower, you said? Yeah, cold shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that as well? Have you tried that one? Um, I, do that in, I do that in belts. Like, I can't do that. Like, so the hardest time for me to do that challenge is because here where, where I live, we get some brutal winters. Oh, okay. 
um, doing that in the winter time is like, it's just too much. Um, <laughs> but why I will do cold shower challenges is that it's just a reminder for me that life is not always going to be easy. Mm, like, yeah. and you're not, it's not always going to be comfortable. You have to make yourself uncomfortable sometimes. And there's nothing more uncomfortable than turning on a shower on as cold as you can, jumping in and just taking it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And how how long do you so, go for? About a minute, five minutes, or something? Or yeah. yeah, no, like I'll do my whole shower like that. So I'll, I'll whole yeah, shower. Oh, wow. yeah. So I'll do it at least three, four minutes. Um, but one thing that, that's crazy about it is like once you get past the first, that you know, thirty seconds of it, yeah, it's you know that that initial like shock is gone. So it's like it's and then you're just like okay, it just it just is what it is at that point. So um, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, how about, um, I think I heard you talking about brain development as well. You're, you're working on, on um, your brain in terms of uh, rewiring it. Uh, I think that relates back to your habits, isn't it? The importance of habits. So um, like, do, any, do you do any techniques in terms of, um, you know, like NLP and, and uh, memory work and stuff of that? Like do you do any um, types of memory type of work or anything? Or So I haven't, I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, mm. I, where I started with, the i just call it like brain training i guess um yeah okay it's one habit i do every day i just have different apps so the one i'm, I'm i focused on for the last while is elevate um What's and that one? so it is uh so it breaks it down into reading writing math speaking and mm. uh, listening okay and it's just different like little different games it's kind of like lumosity mm. um it just gives you different games to do every single day and um I just work on, again, for me, the rewiring of the brain is just like washing up little things like, oh, I'm bad at math. And then when I started training my brain, I realized that I'm actually good at math. But when I was young, I had a bad experience with math. And I just carried that with me for years. Yeah. When that actually was a strong point for mine. But once I had that bad experience, I was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm bad at math. And I started telling myself that story. Mm. Um, so a lot of it is just training my brain to rewrite some of those um, just just lies that I've been believing and like finding out what is your actual truth. Like you might be telling yourself, man, I can't write, but it's like, well, can you actually not write or have you just not practiced writing? Mm. Because no one can shoot a basketball until they practice shooting a basketball. Like they have to work on it. Yes. Mm. Some people are more naturally talented at it than others, of course. But if you work at that thing, um, you can get better at it. But there are also other things that we do just really suck at. And even when we work at it, we're not going to get much better at it. And it's mm. not worth putting the effort into it. Mm. Um, so like just figuring out where that is for you. But um, uh, for me, I started it out there because I, I knew that I was actually, math was something I enjoyed to a certain point in my life. Um, mm. And I wanted to rewrite that story. So every day I work on my math and I work on just basic, basic like it's nothing special. Like I just do multiplication in my head, division, that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, just rewrite that story. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Um, all right. How about... Um... So you've got, you're working on the, the writing, you're doing SEO, you've got a book as well. well. What's your next, what's your next steps? What's the next steps in terms of um, achievement? What's your next goals that you want to achieve? Um, so one of the big things that um, I, I'm just focused on right now is so I have all the different products that I set up okay. and it's just, just growing the overall traffic to the site. Like I really want um, to get, the traffic to my website to more traffic. The, yeah. yeah. You know, half a million a month range. Like I'm really trying to get it to that point and mm. push it there. I, I still have ways to go. Um, but so what's the strategy um, there? Like lots of joint ventures with other blog sites or, or just writing more content. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a combination, you know, I, I think the joint ventures will, will come as, as, as I go and, and it continues to grow. Um, but a lot of it is just sitting down. Like I, I put, I put out two blog posts a day. Um, day nice Very which nice. is yeah and and again that's just really come from habits like I was writing so much every single day that i was able to build up enough of a of a of a database of articles and then i started you know the podcast to go with that so i'm just doing that every day but the big the big strategy there is i really want to um just nail this seo so um mm. i i research and, um, to make sure that the things that i'm writing can be seo properly mm. um yeah, because I, I think the thing is with SEO, and this is the mistake I've made, and I've seen other people make this a lot, is it's really easy to focus on social media mm -hmm. over SEO. But the problem mm -hmm. with social media is 
yes, it gives you that instant feedback. Like I can share something, I see a retweet, it's like, yes, people are sharing it, but you have to continue hammering it month yeah. after month in order to guarantee that traffic. Mm. Yes, you know, traffic's guaranteed. I don't want to say it's guaranteed because it could go down, but yeah. for the most part, if you get 10,000 people visiting your blog this month, then chances are you're going to have 10,000 next month yeah. and then the month after that. So yeah. it makes your income very predictable because then mm. it's just a numbers game. Well, if I can get 10,000 people coming in, how many people can I can get to sign up to my email list? Yeah. If I get that many people to sign up from the email list, how many people can I convert to actually buying something? And then mm. it's just numbers at that point. Yeah, that's amazing how you just said that. Because, um, yeah, that, that's something I just recently learned as well with, with like Instagram. I just noticed that, you know, when you post something, okay, fine, you get a few likes, get comments, but it's not like anyone's doing any searches for that Instagram post. It doesn't pop up any search engines or anything. So you're only relevant for only that time when you post. So you have to go over and over again, you got to keep posting and it's crazy, but, but with a blog site or, and with YouTube, there's, there's longevity, you know, when you post yes. a blog site, when you post a, a video on YouTube, it just stays forever and people do searches and just continues to bring you traffic. So yeah, you, you really knocked it on the head. You, you figured it out, man. <laughs> so, no, and, and, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Podcast as well, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a trial and error thing um, mm-hmm. that I was there. Like, I was that guy that was like, social media is the way. Social yeah. media, social media, I was just all about it. And I realized, yeah. like, wow, even when I had things go viral, like I've had things just absolutely go nuts on the internet. And yeah. then it's done. And then you're like, oh, I'm back to my normal traffic again. It's like <laughs> 200,000 people came through my site. That was great for two days. And now mm. it's done. What was the content? What was the viral content? What was the viral content? I I wrote this article, oh man, it was a while ago. I don't even think it's still up on the internet, but it was um, five, the five hardest sports to train and compete in. Okay. And I made wrestling number one and like the wrestling community just went off about it. They just shared it and they loved it. They were like, like, see, I told you guys wrestling is the hardest sport. And yeah. but at that point, it just kind of fit timing wise because I was still at Iowa State when I wrote that. Yep. And so I shared it with some of the wrestlers that were on the, of the wrestling team there and they, they started sharing it and it just kind of nice. went from there. But another thing that is still actually on the internet is um, I made a video of uh, uh, Funniest Running Styles, okay. which like it's on you. I don't even know what it's at on YouTube now, but well over like 100, 200,000. But it just went like in the track community, it just mm. went bananas. Like people were sharing it like crazy, telling their friends about it and stuff. Oh, nice. uh, and it's like it's cool for like a day but i'm like i just realized like long-term play it's not i'm not a viral content guy like i want yeah. steady proven predictable yeah. traffic that mm. that you can measure and, and um convert a lot easier than that mm. yeah i like what you said about the bamboo as well um you know it, it, you got to keep watering it right you got to keep watering it and then maybe about three years time or five years time it just sprouts up so um mm-hmm. It reminds me of uh, this guy I interviewed. He's um, his name is Stephen Summers. He's he's got this really successful Amazon business, and you know he just talks about you just have to water it like every single day, and it's like a hockey stick. It's just like that, but then eventually it just goes right up. So um, yeah, and I think you're you're like a you're like a turtle. You just you know take it easy, take it easy, but just be very very consistent, and then eventually boom, you're just gonna win the race. So, right yeah, exactly, and that that is the key right there. It's that it is that consistency when you see nothing happening and you're like, you're looking around like, why? Where's my feedback? Where's my, where's my, yes, where's my, my why, nothing? Why, <laughs> why aren't people buying this stuff? Where's yeah. my traffic? And, and you're yeah. right. And that's how I felt about my track career. Honestly, it was like so much years of just toil, sweat, tears, grind. And it's mm. like, I felt like nothing was happening. Then all of a sudden that Olympic year, I'm telling you like everything just took off and like, it just revealed the keys to success to me. It's like, just keep at it. Keep at that one thing, focus on what you're doing. And just keep working at it. And it's like, eventually it's going to take off if you stay with it long enough. But um, mm. too many people get discouraged. Like the amount of people I've seen, for example, put out a YouTube video or start a podcast. And then mm. they can't believe that they didn't get like a thousand views on the first yeah. one. And I'm like, it's the first, it's literally your first video. Like, you have <laughs> it's going to suck as well. <laughs> yeah. It's going to suck. And you have to give people a reason to care. Like you have to, it takes time to build an audience, but mm. they just want it quick. They want it fast. And yeah. It just doesn't doesn't work out in the long run. Cool. All right. So um all right. So one last question is um this is one of my favorite questions is let's say that you're standing in front of a time machine, you enter it, press a button, and you were to go back in about 10, maybe 15 years and talk to your younger self, what would you say? Um that would be my advice right there. Find 
that one thing that matters to you and just keep keep working on it keep keep watering it keep sticking with it keep hammering away keep knocking on doors just keep with that one thing um don't get distracted by all these different opportunities that come up because this guy made money with real estate that guy made money with cryptocurrency yeah <laughs> like don't get distracted with what everybody else is doing focus on that thing that you know you know god made for you just keep working on it just keep going keep moving forward um and uh yeah that that's what all would be honestly just being consistent with that one thing because it there are so many distractions yeah here. Um, and even when like the amount of people that come up to me and they're like Ian, you should do this to make money and it's mm. like i get that somebody else made money doing that that's fine and like warren buffett was one really pointing this out for me he was like there's some people who make money with internet companies great that's just not his thing mm. he, doesn't, he doesn't invest in the internet company like he invests in like products that are way easier to understand like Geico and Coca-Cola and stuff like that. That's his thing. He's like, mm. but those people can make money doing that. Like, that's fine. But this is how I'm going to make money. Mm. And it just helps to remind me that it's okay for someone else to make money doing something else. You yeah. don't have to jump into it because this guy started some multi-level marketing company. So he should as well, or because of this or that. It's like, if you don't know about it and you're not passionate about it, stay focused, keep hammering, keep working on that one thing that matters to you and keep watering it and eventually that that bamboo tree is going to sprout up yeah yeah fantastic okay so how can people get in contact with you then um i would say uh you can email me if you want uh, my email is ian at the habit mm-hmm. if you want to just check out uh, just the content products things i have to offer um you can go to um the habit um if you want to check out my course it's just course dot the habit stacker.com um awesome. if you want to check out the book it's allergic dot the habit stacker.com um, I, I can give you all these links so you can put them in the show notes yep. but um easiest way is either email me or um just go to the um go to the habit stacker.com and you can see all the different things i have to offer if you have an iphone you can check out the app store um mm. the habit stacker um or it's just called habit stacker in the, in the apple store but um you can download the habit tracker there if you want to um and that'll get you started that's awesome. Well, Ian, I really appreciate your time today. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you waking up so early to, to do this podcast. And um, But yeah, you know, you shared some amazing wisdom with, with everyone today. And, um, you know, I'm really inspired by, you know, by your work and, and your tenacity to, to get out there, to train, to, to work on yourself. Because not a lot of people, you know, not a lot of people are out there to, to um, improve themselves and also share a great message. So, you know, I really want to say thank you for, for your time and, you know, sharing your great wisdom and, you know, wish you all the best. And I know that you're going to be out there and inspiring many, many people for many, many years to come as well. So well done. And yeah, keep going, man. No, I, I appreciate that love, man. And um, honestly, what you're doing, you be relentless that the name says it all. And I'll tell you what, I, I slowly over the years, I've met more and more people who are from Australia. That oh, really? Me want to go to Australia. <laughs> cool. um, most of the people I do know right now are athletes. So um, you're one of the first entrepreneurs I've connected with from Australia. So yeah. Um, the, come, the, come on down, down, down yeah come on down under you know we'll link up and uh yeah you show you around you know ride some kangaroos and stuff together <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that no 100 percent. that is the goal i'm definitely going to take you up on that man yeah too easy awesome we'll do all right man all right man thanks a lot take care